Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nur Ali Hanis, along with my group members of the Sufians group, Nur Nabila Husna, Nur Farah Adina, and Nur Ali Adamna. We'll be presenting about the constitutional rule and power of the Malay rulers in their respective states. First and foremost, in Malaysia, the early history of constitutional monarchy began with the Malacca Sultanate which was stated in a document from the Ming dynasty in China when it was governed by Mekat Iskandar Shah who was enthroned on 5th October 1414 to succeed his father Parameswara as his second ruler and on that occasion, they are traders uh, traveled to Malacca. And on 13 May uh, 1455, Muzaffar Shah was the first to use the term Sultan. Then the collapse of the Malacca Sultanate happened. The collapse of the Malacca Sultanate is thought to have given rise to other uh, Malay Sultanates and so, in 1530, the collapse resulted in the establishment of the four Malay Sultanates of Kedah, Pahang, Johor and Perak. The Malacca Sultanate then is attributed for founding Malaysia's constitutional monarchy because as of 1885, there were nine Malay Sultanates in total. It was known that the major causes of the constitutional monarchy uh, were succession disputes and uh, foreign intervention. Nonetheless, uh, after the country achieved independence, uh, the constitution remains to be upheld. Next, the institution of constitutional monarchy continues to be one of the founding principles in the parliamentary democracy system practiced in Malaysia. It consists of the Yang Dipertuan Agong YDPA as the head of the states of Malaysia and nine Malay rulers whereby seven is called Sultan which respectively from Selangor, Terengganu, Kelantan, Pahang, Johor, Kedah and Perak while in Negeri Sembilan. The Malay ruler is known as the Yang Dipertuan Besar and in the palace he is called a Raja. Each of these nine Malay states has a hereditary ruler who reigns for life in the sense that the ruler in all states must be a Malay, male of royal blood, a descendant of state rulers and a Muslim. However, the procedure of selecting the ruler varies greatly depending on their state constitution. The constitutional monarchy in Malaysia also consists of Yang Dipertuan Negeri as head of states for Malacca, Penang, Sarawak and Sabah. Unlike rulers, the YDPN may be a commoner and need not be a Malay. The hereditary Malay rulers in the United States remain uh, to have uh, such a significant influence over the political framework through a variety of powers conferred by the federal constitution. To explain further, all sultans and the Yang Dipertuan Negeri has established the Conference of Rulers. The Conference of Rulers is not just uh, the most prominent, but it is also a peculiar institution as it is the only one in the world. So, uh, in line with Article 38 of the Federal Constitution, the Conference of Rulers was constituted upon the nation's independence with the derivation of their functions and duties, which is the contents of our presentation. The framework of Conference of Rulers, uh, role and power builds to all governmental institutions as conferred by the Constitution to legislature, executive, judiciary and other functions. A ruler's jurisdiction is restricted to his state only. Nonetheless, as a member of the Conference of Rulers, the Malay rulers may deliberately make decisions that will influence the whole federations. So, uh, for the next slide, we will start off by explaining the constitutional role and power of the Malay rulers in terms of legislature. First of all, we will discuss the constitutional role and power of Malay rulers regarding the legislature. Article 38 of the Act Schedule of the Federal Constitution outlines the Conference of Rulers' legislative rights as provided. Article 38, Clause 2 The Conference of Rulers shall exercise its function of b. Agreeing or disagreeing to the extension of any religious acts, observance, or ceremonies to the Federation as a whole, and c. Consenting or withholding consent to any law and making or giving advice on any appointment which under this constitution requires the consent of the conference or is to make by or after consultation with the conference. And class 4, no law directly affecting the privilege, position, honors or dignities of the rulers shall be passed without the consent of the conference of rulers. And 
Clause 5 stated that the conference of rulers shall be consulted before any change in policy affecting administrative action under Article 153 is made. The conference of rulers has been referred to as the country's supreme institution, which implies that even parliament is subordinate to it. Article 44 of the Federal Constitution mentioned that the parliament consists of three components or units, as stated in the said article. The legislative authority of the Federation shall be vested in Parliament, which shall consist of the Yang Dispen Agong and two majlis, to be known as the Dewan Negara and the Dewan Rakyat. Therefore, the Conference of Rulers shall exercise the legislature authority of the Federation. According to Article 38, Clause 2, Subsection B of the Federal Constitution, one of the functions of the Conference of Rulers is agreeing or disagreeing to the extension of any religious act, observance or ceremonies to the Federation as a whole. Even though the Sultan is the head of the Federation, the Conference of Rulers still has the authority to decide on religious matters, particularly uh, when they concern the Federation along with strengthening it to prevent any religious matters from becoming politicized, this is done to maintain the institution's unity and preserve its dignity. Datuk Dr. Mujahid Yusuf Rawa, Parti Aman Negara state that the country's Islamic policies should be decided by the Conference of Rulers with the federal government's Islamic affairs agencies serving as the executors and he claimed that doing so would prevent organisations like Malaysia's Islamic Development Department uh, which known as JAKIM from being abused for political ends as well as compromising the rights of the Conference of Rulers. As can be seen in Article 38.2c of the Federal Constitution, it is important to keep in mind that our monarchs are constitutional monarchs. Moreover, the Malay rulers are not the executive, legislative or judiciary member, which are the three branches of government with the authority to make decisions in their respective areas of responsibility under the principle of the separation of power. The government must provide the things that need to be discussed with the Conference of Rulers and the same is also applicable for matters that must be submitted to the Conference of Rulers for careful consideration. When the constitution is enforced, it must be viewed as a topic that the government brought before the Malay rulers. Any party wishing to submit a report, memorandum or request to the Conference of Rulers must do so in accordance with the proper formalities, which must be civilised, dignified and honourable, rather than by staging protests, making noise or acting impolitely in front of the National Palace entrance. Other than that, the Malay Rulers also has the power to veto federal legislation on several critical and sensitive issues, which includes any law affecting the privileged position, honours or dignities of the rulers, altering the boundaries of the state, amendment to certain provisions that must not be passed without consent of the Conference of Rulers, and citizenship. And therefore, there must be no law that directly affects the privileged position, honours or dignities of the rulers shall be passed without the consent of the Conference of Rulers. In the case of Fang Ching Ho, the Federal Court rejected the argument that the YDPA is a ruler and therefore, abolishing a priest in criminal matters to the YDPA required the consent of the Conference of Rulers because it amounted to affecting the privileged position and honour and dignities of the rulers. The court determined that the rulers' position was unaffected by the termination of a priest to the YDPA. Furthermore, before any changes in policy regarding the privilege of the Malays and the natives of Sabah and Sarawak are made, Article 38 Clause 5 of the Federal Constitution mandates consultation with the Conference. The Council of Rulers must be consulted first before making any changes to the policy that affecting administrative action under Article 153. In the case of Datuk Seri Anwar Ibrahim against public prosecutor, the Court of Appeal held that to consult does not mean to consent. The Federal Constitution used the words consent and consult separately. As for the example, the word consent is used in Article 159, Clause 5 of the Constitution, which states that the amendments to certain provisions of the Constitution cannot be passed by Parliament without the consent of the Conference of Rulers. So, uh, the word consult here means to discuss something with someone before the decision is made. 
in other words it means seeking advice before taking a position and the opinion of the party being consulted has no legal weight with the party conducting the consultation it is depending on the personality of the parties involved um, and what actually occurs may be different Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh my name is Nona Blahusna my metric number is 2117322 and I'll be presenting on constitutional role and power of Malay rulers when they are exercising their function as the executive of the federation. In accordance to the Article 39 of the Federal Constitution, the executive authority of the federation shall be vested in the Yang di Pertuan Agong and exercisable subject to the provisions of any federal law and of the second schedule by him or by the cabinet or any minister authorized by the cabinet. But parliament, parliament may by law confer executive functions on other persons. The thing that I want to highlight here is on the words of exercisable subject to the provisions of any federal law. Hence, the Conference of Rulers shall exercise the executive authority of the Federation as stipulated under 5th Schedule of the Federation of the Federal Constitution. Generally, the executive exercises the law made by the Parliament at the federal level or by the State Legislative Assembly at the state level. The arrangement of their functions as an executive had been explained in Article 38 of the Federal Constitution and it had also been stressed in the case of Pan Ching Ho against public prosecutor, where in this case the appellant argued that Section 13 of the Courts of Judicature Act 1976, which abolished appeals in criminal cases to the Yang Di Pertuan Agong, was invalid because the Conference of Rulers had not given its consent under Article 38, Clause 4 of the Federal Constitution. It being said that such right cannot be taken away from the rulers without their express consent as referred to Article 159, Clause 5 of the Federal Constitution. In this article, it explained that such amendments under Article 10, Subsection Clause 4, provisions of Part 3, Article 38, 63, and etc. cannot be passed without the prior consent from the Conference of Rulers. However, the judge in this case found that his argument had no basis as the Conference of Rulers is a constitutional body established under Article 38 of the Federal Constitution with certain executive, deliberative, and consultative functions which had no inclination on the matter issued by the appellant in this case. There are three functions that can be exercised by the Conference of Rulers as the executive who also had constitutional roles and powers that have been vested on them that can be exercised under their discretion. First, in Article 38, Clause 2, Subsection A, they had power to elect the Yang Di Pertuan Agong and the Deputy of Yang Di Pertuan Agong. They also may remove the elected person from the given title. Second, in Article 38, Clause 6, Subsection C, the laws on regards to the Islamic rules and on Malay rights needs to pass the consent from the members of the Conference of Rulers. Third, in Article 38, Clause 2 and 3, the Conference of Rulers has been given the power to deliberate on questions of national policy such as immigration policy and any other matter it thinks fit. In the first function, the process of the election is made among the rulers and this process had been clearly explained in Part 1 of the Third Schedule in the Federal Constitution, where the elected Yang Di Pertuan Agong must have at least five votes from the members of the Conference of Rulers who voted in, for, in favor of the election and also went to dismiss the YDPA. It need to be noted that the rulers shall not elect a deputy of the YDPA in the absence of the YDPA. On to the second one, where it mentions that the laws on regards to the Islamic rules and on Malay rights need to pass the consent from the members of the Conference of Rulers. Here are amongst the rights that need prior consent from the rulers before the amendment which had been stipulated under Article 152, Article 153 and Article 10, Subsection B. Next, through the times, there had been much evidence which had been compiled that showed their efforts in upholding the, 
the sacred Islamic rules and protecting Malay exclusive rights as one who held constitutional role and power. The most notable one is when His Highness Sultan of Perak, Sultan Nazrin Muizidin Shah, contributed on launching a book written by Professor Kamal Hassan entitled Corruption and Hypocrisy in Malay Muslim Politics. The issue of the book revolved on the attitude of Malay politicians Malay politicians' hypocrisy on the farce of upholding the Malay rights. It is such a regret as the actual defender of their right is on the palm of the rulers and not the politician as practiced by the politician nowadays. His Highness urged the Malaysian politician to stop racism and insensitivity towards religious matters as to imbue prosperity in the country. Hence, it is a crucial thing for, people, for Malay people to realize this constitutional power and role that have been held by the Conference of Rulers in Malaysia. On the third function, they have the right to be consulted on the regards of national policies and matter that it thinks fix. As a figure looked up by the people they govern, it certainly will no doubt that they have big influence on national level issues such as on the One Malaysia Development Berhad IM, one MDB scandal. This had brought the attention of other countries like the United States, Singapore and Switzerland who had been involved in this scandal as well. This case had caused an uproar in 2009 where the state fund had lost billions without concrete reasons. To avoid such matters, to avoid such matter from happening again, the members of Conference of Rulers reprimanded that all leaders need to adhere to the tenet of the country's principle in upholding the constitution and the rule of law. Moreover, they need to maintain transparency in law in achieving justice to all parties included. Thus, it is clear here that the Malay rulers had a significant figure in exercising their constitutional role in this national level case. My name is Nuala Damna and now I'm going to discuss on the last constitutional role and power of Malay rulers which is on the aspect of judiciary. So, in the Federal Constitution, Act 38 of the 8th Schedule has uh, laid down the rights relating to judiciary of the Conference of Rulers, uh, which include the Malay rulers, as follows. The appointing members of the Special Court under Clause 1 of Article 182, or E, the granting of pardons, reprieves, and respites, or of remitting, suspending, or committing sentences under Clause 12 of Article 42. Uh, so, two of the five judges on the Special Court may be appointed by the Conference of Rulers and this includes the Malay rulers as well. Where any legal action against the Yang Di Putuan Agong or a Sultan must be tried in that court according to Article 182 of the Federal Constitution. So the Malay rulers have the authority to commute the sentence or give a pardon in cases where King Sultan or the consort of the King or Sultan is proven guilty in court. And so following consideration of any written advice from the Attorney General, the Malay rulers may, in accordance with Article 42 Clause 5 of the Federal Constitution, exercise the pardon power in relation to the Yang Di Pertuan Agung, the Sultans and their consorts. And so Article 42 Clause 5 of the Federal Constitution provides as follows. Uh, power of pardon. The pardon board constituted for each state shall consist of the Attorney General of the Federation, the Chief Minister of the State and not more than three other members who shall be appointed by the ruler or yang dipertua negeri. But the Attorney General may from time to time by instrument in writing delegate his functions as a member of the board to any other person and the ruler or yang dipertua negeri may appoint any person to exercise temporarily the functions of any member of the board appointed by him who is absent or unable to act. Article 122B Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution which is as follows controls the selection procedure for these judicial positions. So the Chief Justice of the Federal Court, the President of the Court of Appeal, and the Chief Judges of the High Courts, and subject to Article 122C, the other judges of the Federal Court, the Court of Appeal, and of the High Courts shall be appointed by the Yang Di Pertuan Agong, acting on the advice of the Prime Minister, after consulting the Conference of Rulers. 
So on 25th November 2021, the 257th meeting of the Conference of Rulers was held, which discussed, among others, the appointment of judges for the High Court. So the Kedah ruler who chaired the meeting stated, Unity among the people and awareness of the aspirations and principles of the Rukun Negara must be continuously promoted as only our own strengths and system of government can overcome the various challenges in the future. And this power can be seen being exercised on the 3rd February 2022 where the appointment document for Dr. Muhammad Zabidin Muhammadiyah as a federal court judge was given to him by Yang Diputuan Agung Al-Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin Al-Mustafa Billah Shah. So His Majesty also gave the Court of Appeal Judge appointment document to Datuk Muhammad Azlan Muhammad Ghazli at the event conducted at the Istana Negara. Besides that, the power to grant a royal pardon by the Malay rulers is largely embodied in the Article 42 Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution, which provides that uh, the Yang Diputuan Agung has power to grant pardons, reprieves and respites in respect of all offences which have been tried by court-martial and all offences committed in the federal territories of Kuala Lumpur, Labuan and Putrajaya. And the ruler or Yang Dipertua Negeri of the state has power to grant pardons, reprieves and respites in respect of all other offences committed in his state. So now we will see examples from cases where the first one is the case of Kapal Singh against Sultan of Selangor whereby here Kapal Singh sought a declaration that the Sultan of Selangor had violated Article 42 of the Federal Constitution by making the general declaration that he would not commute the sentences of anyone who had been sentenced to death for drug trafficking. So according to Kapal Singh, the Sultan may only deny a clemency petition after taking the pardon sports counsel and giving careful thought to the appeal at hand. So the High Court determined that the Sultan was not required to follow the pardon sports advice. And this principle can also be seen applied in the case of Juraimi bin Hussein against pardon sport state of Pahang and others, whereby Mazran Idris, a state assemblyman in Pahang, had been murdered. And Juraimi had been found guilty of the crime along with the infamous chairman Mona Fendi and her husband. So all three tiers of the superior courts imposed a death sentence against Juraimi. His clemency request to the Sultan of Pahang was made, but later got rejected. In conclusion, uh, despite the fact that the position of the Malaysian monarchy is further clearly stipulated in the constitution, we must not deny the commitment of the rulers behind the scenes. The Malay rulers earn greater reputation and authority in every aspect of legislature, executive and judiciary. Ultimately, the institution of constitutional monarchy in Malaya, uh, whereby the constitutional uh, rule and power practiced by the Malay rulers developed far stronger and more influential than uh, the envisioned by the alliance and the red report. That's all from us. Thank you for listening.